Hey the fellow travelers, Mark here with Walter's World, and today we are back at my mom's and dad's house. They are actually away right now. There's Liam saying hi. And I thought we'd do is a little live feed while we're here, since we have some time to chat for a bit. Jocelyn is at her mom's house right now, helping out her cat. So uh, we're uh, we're cat sitting a bit for the mother-in-law this weekend, so we're gonna have some, some cat fun this weekend. Um, anyway, I uh, hope you're all doing well. It's been a fun summer so far traveling. Hope everyone's having a good time traveling as well. Hey, everybody there. Police videos. Good to see you there. Wall, good to see you. Melvin Gamer. Hi there, buddy. Sarth, good to see you. Hope everyone's having a good time. Um, so what I thought I'd do today is just kind of go through your questions and we're going to talk about some future stuff out there because we're starting to narrow down some uh, places for next year. So it's getting kind of exciting to kind of get some ideas from you and some suggestions from you all. Daniel Woods, hey buddy. Dollar, hello. Jillister Gaming, hello there. Rowan, Keith, Aaron, good to see you all there. So I hope everyone is doing well. Carl, hope you're doing good, buddy. Bruno, Bert, <laughs> Carl, another Carl. Lots of people, lots of places out there. Good to see you all. Um, so it's been it's been a really fun summer. We did get to see a lot of places so far. Um, just started getting some tickets or some other locations in the U.S. I will be in uh, back in Savannah. I'm going to check out Atlanta. We got uh, Albuquerque and Santa Fe and Mr. Burp there says hi. Uh, so there is that. So we're going to have some U.S.-based stuff for the rest of the summer, uh, traveling around there and stuff like that. Then in the fall, we start going international again. With We got a trip to France. Uh, hopefully we'll get down to Andorra when we're there. We got a trip to Israel already booked up, and now we're trying to figure out what we're going to do for around the holidays. So we're thinking maybe either go down to Australia or we might do like a Turkey and Egypt trip to try to do those. So there's some lot of lot, lot of stuff really coming out. Um, but anyway, I guess I should answer some of the questions going by because there's a lot of questions going by, and Jocelyn's not here right now, so usually we're going back and forth. So I'll occasionally be looking over there to get some questions. So if I don't get you, you know, it's okay to post them again. Don't be upset if I don't get your question because there's a lot going by, and it's just me today for now. So um, let's see. I'm Park <laughs> Buttercup. I have not been to Yellowstone. Jocelyn has been. Uh, we're looking to do an RV trip the end of next summer where we'll go out to the west coast and, and go see a bunch of national parks and stuff like that if you are doing national park travel probably one of the best blogs i find out there is a wander filled life uh, grant and his wife they go to all they have an rv and they go to all kinds of uh national parks all throughout the country and they got all kinds of really great advice for them there so that's really kind of cool um Let's see, Marcus Patterson is heading to Warsaw. Nice, you'll have a good time when you're there. Uh, someone that doesn't speak the language needs to get around. Well, here's the thing, it's Marcus, it looks like you speak English pretty well. You'll be fine traveling, because that is the international travel language, and that is the second language of Poland. Uh, with students, kids learn that, stuff like that. You'll be fine, don't worry. And then pretty much anywhere you go, you don't really need to be worried about the language so much, especially if you speak English. Um, a lot of smiles and points is, is it will, will help you out quite a bit, so don't worry about that. Um, Police videos, come to the Philippines. We will get to the Philippines eventually. That is on the list. But the problem is, is some places like some people get really upset with us. We haven't been to Southeast Asia or some other places. And part of it is, is when we, if we would go there, we want to spend, we don't want to spend a couple weeks. We want to spend a couple months there. And when the kids have time, it's during, you know, monsoon season. So I'm not going to be going to the Philippines or, or India or, you know, Southeast Asia when it's the, the bad weather season. Just like I don't go to Florida during hurricane season because it's too much of a risk when you go there. Not for like a safety thing, but just you're not going to have as good, a much, as good of a time. And I know a lot of travel bloggers have gone to Philippines and India at the wrong time of the year. And then they're like, oh, this is horrible. I don't know why I came here. Oh, so I'm like, well, yeah, you came at the wrong time of the year. And so we want to show people the, the best times possible so that we're going to wait till we can actually get a time we can get it all scheduled there. So don't worry. We will get in the Philippines and Southeast Asia and stuff like that. Sam Ireland, what was your first job? Uh, my first job was a volunteer job at the old Gardner Museum of Architecture and Design. I was a docent. I dressed up in a costume from the 1800s and I was William Shipley, the first person from my hometown that was killed in the Civil War. And so I would tell a history about stuff. Um, Oh, Liam wants to tell me about a game. Um, yes. Do you know that you know he has yeah. so many? Mm -hmm. Um, I actually got all the tokens for that. Game. Liam got all the tokens on his game. So it's a very special proud. box. It's a special box. Okay, and buddy. Can I get that? To I'm trying to help. We have some questions here. <laughs> he gets twenty upgrades. Cool. Now. Very cool. Yes, so Liam is excited about his new uh, newish game on my my old phone that he has for his race cars. Older, Older phone. It's 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 his phone now. It's my old phone he likes to call it so, older game sorry sorry yeah <laughs> but it's still his phone he wants you to know 
Um, let's see. How many countries have you been to with your kids? Tree talker. Um, I think Kayla's been to 47 countries and Liam has been to 42 countries. Um, I mean, it, it is quite a few countries, but we were, we actually go back to a lot of places again because we, if you find a place we like, we like to visit again and again. And I know there's some travel bloggers that just go on like, I want to get, you know, 100 countries. I want to get all the countries and they're going through. And I mean, they're being a traveler, which is awesome and cool. And they're seeing those things. We like to go back so the kids can like make friends and learn more about the culture, maybe learn about the language and stuff like that. So we're trying to do some of those things. Uh, yeah, I would have Liam come and, and, and do the chat with us for a little bit, but I'm going to guess he wants to play his video game for a bit, but we'll try to get Liam here for a bit. Liam, you want to come help answer some questions? No. no. Oh, sorry, I asked. Uh, we'll see what happens. Um, let's see. Daniel Woods, why do you go around the world? Uh, we go around the world because we want to actually experience as much as we can and see the world. I mean, it's a huge world with so many cool things to see and do. If I get a chance to show my kids that or I get to help, see other, help other people travel better, that's what we've been trying to do for a long time. It's just giving people, like, letting them see, like, we made mistakes when we travel. We're going to help other people not make those mistakes or have people have a better time when they go. Because I've met a lot of people over the years that have had a bad time traveling, not because of anything that was wrong, it's just they weren't prepared. They didn't know about something, whether it is, you know, having to pay for the bread someplace or the dog poop on the streets or, or hey, you need to tip these people or not, and that's how you tip. There's stuff that people sometimes get upset by, and I'm thinking if they just knew beforehand, they'd enjoy their trip better so they can have a better, more relaxing time when they travel. So that's one of the reasons why we do that. James Ross, have you ever been to El Salvador? Uh, not yet. We're looking to go this February. So it's it's on the books to, well, it's not, I haven't put the flights yet, but we're looking at that for a, a trip. Actually, I, I asked Jocelyn if I could take Liam there because uh, they have a few days off of school and Caleb and her are going to go one place. I'm like, well, Liam, I could go there. She's like, no, I want to go there. So I think that's where we're going to go in February. Um, Anasas, when are you going back to Lithuania? I still have plenty of Lithuanian videos uh, coming uh, out. I still have plenty more from where we there last time, but we'll get back there eventually. Don't worry about it. Tosh, I am a Wimbledon fan. It's actually on in the other room. Uh, we were watching that. It was one set all when I was watching when I started. Uh, go Federer. I'm a Federer fan. I remember back in the day when he was just unstoppable. And uh, good to see the guy, an elderly gentleman of the sport, keep doing well, shall we say. Uh, so that's nice. Um, someone wrote, is Sao Paulo safe? Um, well, parts of Sao Paulo you'll be okay, but you always have to be careful and always be paying attention. But uh, I lived there for a while. I didn't have really too many problems. But you got to know, we actually have a bunch of videos on safety in Brazil, like how to dress, what not to wear. I mean, no bling, stuff like that can really make a big difference. Uh, so there is that. Um, other thing I would say, um, when you go there, Liam's saying something, I don't know what. Uh, so there's that. Um, but overall in Brazil, Brazil gets a really bad rap. I mean, there are, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. There are, there are some safety issues you got to think about when you go to Brazil. Um, but not the entire country is bad. I mean, a lot of people think it's like Rio where there's, there are some significant problems, but you can still enjoy Rio. You can enjoy a lot of parts of the country. I mean, you go to like Minas Gerais, it's another state kind of by Rio. Colonial cities, great towns to go to and hardly any problems when you're there. So they're just, a lot of it just is doing your research because you'll have people that will just, you know, they've heard one thing and they'll just go off forever how horrible it is. Like we started putting out some of our videos from Rwanda and people were like, no, I'd never go there. They're gonna kill you. I'm like, no, the genocide was 25 years ago. They've come a long way. You know, we, we you know, help support them. They, people are super friendly. And you try to show people because some people have their, they have their blinders on and that's just the way it is. You know, I heard, I had one friend that had a bad experience and so that's the way it is. Well, if you do your research and find out more, sometimes it can make it a lot easier to see some of these places. Dan Mate, top five European cities. Um, I would think top five that I like to go see, like uh, bigger cities, uh, Rome, Prague, Paris, London. And then the fifth one, the fifth one could be a lot of different things. You could have Lisbon, you could have Barcelona, you could have um, Copenhagen or Stockholm. There's a lot of different ones out there. So, but I know my, my, my top four ones. Um, Let's see, DZ to USA. Thank you for the thank you for the uh, super chat. I appreciate that. So the question is, backpack plus e boarding pass. Need to check in. Well, if you already have your e boarding pass, you've already checked in, so you're ready to go. You'll go straight to security, and you'll put your bags through, and you'll have your e boarding pass on your phone, and you'll be good to go. Um, I do that a lot of times when I just have carry on. Um, because then I can save myself a time. Like usually, a lot of times we'll fly through smaller airports, so it doesn't matter. But if I'm going to like Chicago or something like that, I'm like, I'm just gonna, you know, I'm gonna make sure I have a carry-on size thing, so I don't have to go through the long line of check-in. I can just go and go straight to straight to the long line at security. Uh, so that will help you out, buddy. So yeah, you you should be fine. Um, 
other stuff. Hey, Jocelyn, look who's here. Hi. Hi. Did I miss your parents? Yeah, you missed my parents. My parents just left and Jocelyn's just worst daughter-in-law ever. Hi. So we're doing some the, stuff. Are you on the live to be Yes, live? yes, uh, yes, hi. I'm pretty today. <laughs> You're pretty every day, baby. Um, anyway, so someone wrote top five cities to go see in the U.S. Um, I would say New York, Chicago. Um, I mean, Vegas is fun, but I wouldn't take kids there. Uh, San I like San Diego the best in California. Um, let's see. If you want like a, a good southern, I mean, southern city like New Orleans is really fun for all ages. I like Savannah, Georgia is another good place to go. So there is that too. Um, can you check a moped on a plane? No, you cannot. The the with the gasoline or those batteries, they won't let you do that. So if you have like one of those um, like hoverboards and stuff like that, they won't let you take those things either. Aaron Meiser, thank you very much for the super chat, my friend. Buffalo, hey, I actually interviewed at Canisius College there many years ago. They um, never got back to me. So oh well, it all worked out in the end. But yeah, I was looking there. It's a very nice place. Um, I'll be in New York City for three days. I'm torn between doing the typical tourist items versus unique items. Beer tour, museum hack tour. Is it a mistake to skip the classics? Well, here's one thing we like to do. We actually like to kind of combine the, the both of them. So, like, when we were in Paris a couple weeks ago, you know, Jocelyn, I mean, we went to the Rodin Museum, and we were out by the Eiffel Tower, but... We also then did a make a macaron class and the Jocelyn and Caleb did a painting class there. So we actually like to mix it up. And since you have three days there, macaron, yeah, Liam, Liam, yeah, Liam's, Liam's in, in full energy today. Um, so it's good to do, um, I would do actually both of them. I mean, because you have three days, you can actually mix them up. So maybe do the morning one, be a classic, and then the, the more unique one, do in the afternoon, because that kind of leads you on a more fun, free-floating kind of thing. And I think doing those offbeat ones, it's a better way to meet other travelers. Uh, so that could be something to have something like, oh, well, you want to grab dinner later? And that can kind of continue travels on from there. Um, let's see. Next up, is the bad, Dominic writes, is it a bad idea to use Airbnb in a major tour city because it is bad for locals trying to rent an apartment? That is probably one of the biggest issues with Airbnb. Um, if people don't know this, a lot of like places like Lisbon and Portugal and a lot of places in Greece, people have started to rent out their apartments instead of renting it to people that can stay there for, you know, for the whole year that live and work in the city. They actually are, you know, renting out to Airbnbs because they can make a month's rent and one weekend. So for example, in Lisbon, where we lived in Lisbon, we paid 750 euros a month for our apartment. It's like, you know, a three bedroom apartment. And like that was for the month. Now they can rent that same apartment, they can rent it for a weekend. So they get two weekends every month, they're doubling their money. And so you have you have cities where the center has devoid of locals. Like Lisbon, the, the, the old town, I mean, the center town is devoid of locals. They've all had to move out because they can't afford to live there. And so that's one of the big things when people get upset about Airbnb. It really has driven a lot of people a lot out. So I mean, that's one of the things you, I kind of feel bad about because you have those things. I mean, there's like VRBO or Verbo or however you want to say it. Uh, VRB, Vacation Rental by Owner. I, I like theirs because it seemed like those are more ones that were designed to be rentals versus versus like the Airbnb stuff, which is more like, oh, well, I, I had this apartment. I just want to, you know, rent it out and do this. So it is a really tough thing. And that is a really in-depth discussion we need to have because that goes into the whole idea of over-tourism. Like how many people have been driven out of their homes because uh, or apartments because of the Airbnb stuff? How many towns have been irreparably damaged from all the tourists that go through there? How about the cities that, you know, they've sold their soul to the Ryanairs uh, of the world to get these cheap flights in, but the tourists that come in are staying at hostels or they're staying at Airbnbs and are the taxes getting paid? And then are the people, you know, going out to the restaurants or are they just wandering the cities? Because if it's a city, the people just to walk around and enjoy are they putting money into the economy so it's a really tough question that cities have to deal with and i know like amsterdam is being very vocal uh, about like discouraging tourism to it so it's it's a very interesting kind of thing to talk about let's see some more questions Doo -doo 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 -doo. let's see um <laughs> how are portuguese beans oh fajal fajal are good you'll be fine with that no problem let's see um Story Rick, I'll be traveling to Spain this summer. I hear there are many pickpockets in Spain. Any tips for preventing pickpockets? Well, you have tons of videos on preventing pickpockets, okay? Um, I would say if you're going to Spain, 
Barcelona is probably the pickpocketing capital of Europe, and the cops don't care, which is the most frustrating part about it. Um, I've had fans that have told us that they've actually like got a guy with a hand in his pocket. He put he put his cigar out of the guy's hand as he's trying to rob him, and the cops were going to arrest him because he put the cigarette on the guy. Because the, even though the guy was robbing him, I mean it's it's insane. My parents got robbed there, um, but I would say is if you're smart, you know, keep your wallet in your front pocket. Use your use your you know um, travel belts and stuff like that. Your your you know the little things you can put down here or, or, or safety belt or whatever. We can put your money in that way. Always use your hotel safe. You don't need to take your passport around with you. Have that locked up and extra money there. And some people, what they like to do is have like kind of like play money in their front pocket so they can buy stuff easily that way. But their credit cards they might have in their money belt underneath. So there is that. Uh, let's see. Another one. Mark, are you going to Croatia again? We might be around Croatia next summer. We're not sure. Everything is really up in the air. After after November, December, pretty much the we, have, we are completely open to where we're going to go. So we're really trying to figure that out now. But we have some ideas where we might want to go. And one of the things is getting back down to that area, see more countries down there. So we could be back there. Um, hey, for, hey, Christine in Peoria, Illinois. Good to see you. Hey, Olin. Good to see you as well. Um, let's see. Moving down. Okay, money belt, Gavin, money belt or neck wallet? I think it depends what you feel more comfortable with. I'm a bigger guy, so the money belts get a little like hot on my tummy. So sometimes I like the, the ones, the, the necklace one. But there's another one that I've seen that my dad uses all the time that actually attaches onto your belt and you st stick it down to your pants. And I find that one, if you have like kind of looser shorts and stuff like that or pants, that's an easy one to do, though it's kind of weird when you have to take it out. That's why I always keep a little cash in the front pocket so I can like buy little things straight away versus you know having to um you know search for stuff so there is that hey dallas in canada good to see you davis stanley i have not been to key west i would like to go there uh i was looking at flights there actually to go over there with liam because i've got a flight i want to do a thing with him so we're trying to figure out what to do um, but i think we might end up going to a place to go see dinosaur bones first over the beach he wanted that so and our fans wanted that too so we're probably gonna do some of those things um let's see I hide my money in the hat. That's a good idea. Oh, some people like to hide it in their socks. There's actually some shoes and socks you can buy that actually have hidden pockets in them. So there's some things there. Uh, let's see. Heather Miller, will you visit Korea and South Korea and Taiwan? Yes, we will. Um, that's all stuff that's in the future right now. I mean, everything's up in the air. It just depends on our timing and when we can go. Uh, but there's a lot of things. And that's why, I mean, some people get upset with us because we haven't been to certain places. There's only so many days in the year. I mean, I, I have a full-time job as well. So trying to get my, my teaching for my that job in and then the traveling in sometimes limits how many places we can get to in a year. Uh, though we try to get as much as we can. So sorry if we haven't get to everywhere yet. Sorry. Um, okay. So <laughs> fine ass Amy Fresh. How to research safe areas before you travel. So there's a few things you can do. Actually, if you look... Um, if you look at the State Department website, they'll actually give you by country. They'll say like they'll have a ranking, like what's the threat level in that country and then special stuff you should look out for. That would be something to look at. You can like for more of the official one. And I will say like they tend to be overly cautious because it's the government. So they're going to be overly cautious with any kind of stuff there. So that would be a place to start. And then what I do is I'll read reviews and I'll look online. I'll put like, you know, is Jamaica safe? or safety tips for Jamaica or something like that to, to like kind of give yourself some research. Cause a lot of times the safety really comes down to lack of knowledge. Like you don't know about these things and that's where the problems come. So if you know, you can be prepared for it. Like, Hey, I know when I'm on La Rambla in Barcelona, you gotta be careful when you cross the street. Cause that's a big pickpocketing spot. Or, or when I'm in Rome, but I'm coming out of the, the Metro at Coliseum, that's another big pickpocketing spot. I need to be careful there. So sometimes just being a little bit more aware. So research like that, that's what I do all the time. Nicholas Coons, thank you very much for the super chat, my friend. Well, greetings from Canada. Hey, I'm going to Europe for the very first time in September. Very cool. Have a good time. I have about six days at the end of month on plan. Any ideas for a less visited country on the cheaper side? Romania, Turkey. Okay, so if you're if you're looking to go like in that part, like Southeast Europe, Istanbul will be a great place. I mean, that is a fantastic city to go to. Um, six days is probably a bit much to be there. You could kind of tie some stuff in there, but you could do, you know, the Turkey part, Romania. If you're gonna do Romania, I recommend the Transylvania part. That's the north west part of the country. That's really cool. That's the part I like better, uh, to be honest. So that could be something there. Um, you could also look at going down into Croatia, which yeah, September you'll yeah, still be you'll still be able to get around just fine. It's a little bit cheaper than other places. Or you go over to the other side and do like Lisbon and or Portugal and Spain part. That could help you as well. But with six days, you could do like Lisbon and Porto. In, in Portugal, or you could do like Istanbul. And the thing is, you can get to Istanbul from anywhere. 
uh, in Europe because uh, Turkish Airlines goes all over Europe, so you'll be okay. Um, Sam, you're awake. Hey, good to see you, buddy. Um, you keep your money in your hand in your pocket with a wallet in it. Yeah, I do that quite a few times when I'm in any busy places, so, so there is that. Aaron Meiser, good to see you, buddy. Um, Estonia or New Orleans for a week in April? P.S. You guys are awesome. Thanks for doing what you do. Thank you, Aaron. That's really nice of you. Um, thank you for the super chat as well. Um, so whew, Estonia or New Orleans for a week in April? That is a very different place. Okay, so if you were going to do the Estonia one, I don't know if you need a whole week there because I'm going to guess it would be like Friday to – like weekend to weekend. Um, if you're going to do the Estonia thing, I would do Tallinn and Riga and tie those two together. That would be a, like beautiful architecture in that town. You could go see that. Um, I think it just depends on how long you want to fly for, to be honest. Like either way. Um, the Estonia one, Estonia is not cheap. Uh, Laffey is cheap. So like you kind of balance out the prices there. New Orleans about middle price. It's just the, in April, yeah, you should be okay with prices, but it'll still be a little pricey for accommodation in, in New Orleans. So so I hope that helps a little bit. Um, let's see. Let's see. There's one. Someone around. Okay. Do, 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 do. Jeremy Stratham. Tips for starting a travel channel. I would say start by talking about the things you, you like to travel about. Like that's one thing I like to do is like what, what, what do I love about travel? What do I hate about other travel blogs and travel vlogs and stuff like that? I mean that's where we really started Walter's World is because I kept reading all these guidebooks that all caught – like they seemed like they all copied each off, off each other. They hadn't gone to places for real and it's like, you know, can I get more input from like a real perspective? So we really focus on honest travel because – a lot of bloggers and vloggers actually get, you know, free trips and stuff like that. And, and we haven't really gotten hardly any of those things. And so they, I mean, but the thing is, if someone gives you a free trip, you kind of feel obligated. You have to be like a little bit nicer to them. So that's why I'll see a lot of bloggers that are like, oh, this is the greatest city in, in Mexico. I'm like, that's the third city you said this about, you know? So, so you got to be careful with that. But I would say is write about or make videos about what, what your travels are, what, what what you're passionate about and how you can do what you want. Because there's a lot of travelers that all they do is they show themselves travel, okay? And so you'll have, you know, there's some really, uh, Karen Nate get tons and tons of views and, and they're just showing, like, here's us doing our travel stuff and, uh, and um, you know, uh, flying the nest. Like th this is us going on our travels. You know, it's not necessarily a ton of like, you know, like my videos are more, here's what you could do. Like I'm more, I'm a, I'm a professor. So I'm like trying to teach and I'm not showing as much. They're showing you what it's like to do those things. So that could be one way you do it. I, I, I am more, here's the advice so you can go and have the best travel possible on yours, but you can have other ones as well. It's like, here's some really cool stuff you could see, or you might, there's one channel that all they do is they, they show like, you know, time-lapse videos of different like famous locations. So there's a lot of different stuff you can do. And actually, if you look up above, if you go to our other YouTube channel, Professor Walters, up there, um, I have all kinds of videos on starting a YouTube channel that could really help you out. So check those out there. So there's that. Jimmy UK, good to hear from you, buddy. Uh, your thing just pop popped away. So just so you know, it's just me. So these things are going by super fast for me and it gets stuck whenever I stop on one to read. Then I have to go figure out where we are. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Ah, do I get anxiety? Okay, Bruce Diesel, do you get anxiety traveling to places? Have you ever been solo traveling? Yes. <laughs> what are your thoughts on tour operators? So, Bruce, um, um, anxiety going to places. I don't know if I get anxiety going to places. I get anxiety like getting to places. Like, I'm like, can we just get there? Come on, let's go, let's go. Uh, sometimes that happens or if there's a big crowd and like one of the kids wanders off then I'm like hey there's a little anxiety there but not not too much a little 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 scared of flying occasionally anxiety and flying but otherwise not too much um, have I been solo traveling yes I spent you know a number of years before Jocelyn entered my life and and I traveled all the time there too I was terrible I was terrible it was terrible before I don't that's why I blocked it all out but I know there was quite a few countries I went to before before the light entered my life so there's that um, Lindsay Denny, best World War II related site you visited, going to the D-Day beaches and going to Omaha Beach Cemetery and going down to the visitor center where they have all the stories and everything. That's probably the best, the best one to go for. Um, see another one asked, Hey, when are you going to go to LA? I was supposed to go to LA last week, but I was like, some people say, do we ever get tired of traveling? I was just wiped out after seven, seven and a half weeks of traveling. And then I had to go to LA like the next two days later. I was like, no. So I, I ended up not going to that one. So. 
So, but I'll get that. I'll get there. Don't worry. Olin Cowling, love your do's and don'ts. Thank you very much. Thank you for the super chat. I'm glad that the do's and don'ts videos can help you out. Benjamin Bramer, again, thank you for the super chat. Oh, showing love to my favorite travel channel. Thanks, Ben. It really makes a difference. We really appreciate it. Um, for you, I always wonder, what do they do with the, the super chat money? So when we were traveling on this last trip, my camera actually broke. And so I used the money to get a new camera. Um, so thank you for that because the videos, I couldn't make videos without the cameras. And so that really helped out. So thank you for that. Barry Ferns, thank you very much for the super chat as well. Um, I appreciate that as well. Thank you. So Jess, Jerica Mayberry. Hi, hi, Mark. I'm traveling to Toronto in October. What are some suggestions for things to do and places to visit? I have a 10 things to visit in Toronto and a 5 11 hates of Toronto visit. Uh, video from a while ago uh they're still pretty good but the rom for me the royal ontario museum is amazing like you have to go there for the dinosaur bones and, and all the stuff there for that because canada is like dinosaur bones central it's like it's amazing that's one of the best museums for it in the world uh, there's some good art museums there but all the different like um, neighborhoods around the city you can have some amazing food when you go there it's really cool and but my favorite thing in toronto is the hockey hall of fame even if you don't like hockey you'll like their hall of fame it's done extremely well so so that would be one thing i would say to go check out okay let's see Pasta Punk, do you have any advice for Cuba? Sadly, I do not. We keep wanting to get there. I've been studying up on that place for a while. We have not figured out a way to get there yet because when we wanted to go, then things changed. And then like we were looking at going there on a like a cruise kind of thing uh, after Christmas this year. But the prices were just like, I'm like, I, I can't pay that for the four of us. I just don't have the money for that. So, uh, so, there, so there's that. Um, Tony Roberto, thoughts on Mark Weens and James Blick? Um, I don't know James Blick, but Mark Weens, that guy, he he makes you love food. That guy, he's so passionate about the food he has and just wants you to know the food and, and enjoy the food that he's showing you. I think he does a wonderful job for that. I remember I wrote to him many, many years ago and said, hey, would you like to do something? And that's before he got big. He's like, I'd love to, but I just don't have time. And like his channel like blew up like two months later and, and just took off from there. So I'm very happy for him. He's really done. That, that's the guy that's gone from you know nothing to like a whole empire a youtube empire it's just such a great thing to see and he seems like i mean i only had that one like interaction with him but he seems like a nice guy at least in the video so that's really kind of a cool thing um claude legree five destinations for people who love cold weather okay i would say go into alaska um if you go in september you can get the cool weather but still go and see a lot of the sites you can take a cruise then um, I would say if you go to Chile and go out in the Andes there, going back and forth through Patagonia and Chile and Argentina, that's a kind of a cool cold weather one. Um, Christmas markets in Germany, Austria, Switzerland, that's a really good cold weather thing to see. I, I really enjoy those. Going to Iceland, yeah, for a cold weather place. It doesn't really get super cold there, but it's, it's always cool like there, so you'll be fine for that. So those are the ones I'd kind of recommend. Iceland in the winter. Iceland in the winter. Jocelyn saying you get to see the Northern Lights. Um, Let's see. Ooh. Pink Pearl Disney wishes we are thinking about everybody in New Orleans. Be safe with all the flooding and the hurricane there and the, the travel storm. So be safe, everybody. Scott Neal. Hey, buddy. I'm going to have a beer with you. I think the 10th. Um, I think that's what mom said. We'll be there, but I'll, I'll write you and we'll, we'll figure that one out. And now you're just jumped all over. Um, are you a first on the plane kind of family or a board when we board? I am a... I am in this group and I will go when my group is called and then I'll go up. Um, that's what I prefer. I, I Well, the thing is I always like to get my bag up above and so I'll try to be a little bit earlier. Uh, like well, I'll be in my group and I won't be like hovering, waiting, waiting, waiting. Um, that's why like the Ryanair is where it's the cattle call seating it always drives me crazy because people line up like two hours before. And so it's funny because now the cheap airlines know, oh, we can make another 15 bucks off these people by giving them the option. If you pay 15 bucks more, you can board first. And so when it's the cattle call stuff, I actually will pay a little bit extra to get uh, in a bit earlier because it's just such a, it's so crazy because I hate sitting in the middle seat. I'm an aisle person all the way. Um, Grass Mokara, I saw you just came back from Luxembourg. Do you think five days would be too many? Yes. Five days is too many. Two days. Two days. That's all you need. Uh, don't expect good service either. Like, I'll just tell you right now, I expect to spend a lot of money. Frank Calderon, have you been to Universal Studios? I have not, but Jocelyn has taken the boys twice because they love her more than me. And they took her. And they loved it. The boys loved Universal way more than they loved, um, they liked Disney. So, so there is that. Let's see. What else do we have here? More questions. More questions. I'm trying to scroll down to get everybody. Do, do, do. Well, no, I didn't go to Universal. I went to Disney. You went with the boys to all that stuff because you love them more than me. Anyway, next up, 
Uh, Mike Beebe, thank you for the super chat. Uh, what are my thoughts on Rick Steves and Rick Steves tours? Um, so with Rick Steves, he has made Europe accessible to a lot of people that it wasn't accessible to before with his, I mean, he has, I mean, obviously he knows a lot more about travel and he makes it be seen in his videos. Um, you know, cause he kind of comes off as the all shucks tourist, but the, obviously the guy knows what he's doing. Uh, he's done very well with that. I will say, um, one thing I think he does a very good job at is finding local restaurants and local, um, hotels like B&Bs kind of stuff. He's really good at that for Europe. Also his guides, the, the network of guides that he has. If you want to get a guide for a town, I always recommend people go, go to the library, look at the Rick Steves book, hire the guy that's in there for that town. Cause I've used them a few times. They've always been really good. Uh, his tours, I don't know. I, I'm not a tour person because I don't like being restricted to see one one museum. You get one hour to see it or you get 15 minutes at the square. It, it, I, I've done a few and it just it wasn't for me. But I mean, his, I mean, I don't know. I, I would read the views. And any any tour you go on, always read the reviews and read reviews from people. A lot of times are like, like oh, we, we were a family with young kids. We were a, a retiree couple. Like read their reviews that link up to you. Um, and that'll that'll help to make a better idea. Yeah, re and read the good and the bad reviews, okay? Because you'll have um, you'll you'll have people that are you know it's like my mom wrote all the reviews for it, so that's why it looks so good. You know, it's not really that way. So you want to make sure you're um, you want to make sure you're, you're doing that. So other stuff. What travel related YouTube channels would you recommend for people with disabilities? This bird. This is actually one thing I've been talking with two more about with some of our disabled. Um, Travelers, we're gonna to try to put together some stuff. I'm actually, my mom is friends with a lady who in Chicago who actually writes books on traveling with, with family members who have disabilities. So her and I are talking about putting together some videos so we can do some disabled travel stuff. I don't have any off the top of my head that I can tell you, but I know that's something we're gonna be working on to try to get more of that information out there to help other people. So let's see. Franz Beckenbauer, hey, the old uh, Germany coach. Where are the nicest, most open-minded people you have been? Hmm. Nicest, nicest people. Let's see. Greece, I thought Rwanda. Greece was. They were really friendly. Rwanda was really friendly. Tanzania, Tanzania was really friendly. Um, let's see. Where else? Iceland people are super friendly. Italy. What? Italy. Italy people are super friendly. There's a lot of super friendly. Open-minded yeah. stuff's a little different, but friendly people. Yeah. I mean, I think the friendliness of France gets forgotten because of the bad service people get in Paris, but there's some really nice people there. Daniel, thank you very much for the super chat, buddy. Any thoughts, experience with Slovenia? We were actually there last month and I filmed uh, a don'ts of Ljubljana, a don'ts of Slovenia. And I think what to know before you go to Slovenia video. Okay. So when you go there, a small country, but it's gorgeous. Okay, so you're gonna you got Ljubljana, the capital. You're gonna go see that, right? You can see other stuff there. But you want to do a tour and go out one, go to the caves, so you can go explore in the caves. That's really cool. Also, go up to Lake Bled, so you can see the the castle there. But it's not the castle. You want to take the boat out to the island where you can see there's the island. You see it in all the tour books and stuff like that. Um, I'm sure you've seen the picture. That is where you want to go. It's really cool. People are very nice. The food's good too. It's a nice combination of like it's like. Austrian, German, Italian kind of mixed together with their own little like spin. So you'll be very good. You'll be happy when you're there. And the service was nice. I thought I liked the people there. So that was a good time. Let's see. Um, someone sent a super chat MX from Mexico, but there's no message. So thank you for that. Um, thank you. <laughs> Let's see. So the, okay. So Martinez Labas. This August, I'm planning to go to Northern Italy. Do you think it's worth visiting Pisa in August or should I leave it for the next time when it's not that hot? Okay, Pisa, this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna get your picture holding up the Leaning Tower and that's about it. Okay, it's a half day. So kind of judge like, is it worth for a half day to go? Go, you can get it done with and you don't have to go back and see it next time. Okay, if you wanna go see it. Um, I always rank that as one of the most overrated things to go into Europe. Um, cause it's really that and you get like, don't eat anywhere near the leaning tower cause you'll have the worst service. It's just bad there. So do have a heads up for that. Um, Kay Harper, where do you go for your travel research? Actually, um, a lot of times I will read multiple websites. I will look at multiple guidebooks. I will do all kinds of stuff. I will ask our fans about places we're going to go and ask for information there. I'll go to forums to figure out things. But also one of the things is I, I kind of have some ideas before I go to a country, but the thing is, is 
since, like I said, one reason I started this is because so many guides and so many blogs just copy off each other. I'm like, you know what? If one person makes a mistake, that means five other blogs have a mistake. I'm not going to do anything until I actually go there and see it to make my own decisions on things. And so that's one of the things. So I get a lot of ideas beforehand. Then I then I go and experience it myself. And I'll read a lot of like, you know, history of a country, culture of the country, background kind of stuff, because knowing that helps you better understand the people. So that's one thing I like to do. Oh, Morgana, thank you very much for the uh, super chat. I'm visiting Bergen, Norway very soon. Cool. It's my first international flight. A friend is paying. Thank you, friend. Any tips for customs and keeping my passport safe? Okay, Norway, you're not going to have any problems. It's super safe there. You'll be okay. Um, but I would say with customs, so if you're flying into Norway, anytime you're going to go, when you go through customs, what will happen is you'll get off your plane. We actually have a video, what to expect when you get off an international flight. That can help you out. But you'll, you'll get off your plane. When you get off your plane, you'll go and you'll go to passport control first. Okay, you'll, there'll be a sign above saying passport control this way. And so you'll go to passport control. You start on your passport. And they'll, you know, like, hey, how long are you going to stay in Norway for? What are you here for? I'm here for vacation, stuff like that. How many days? Thank you. They stand your passport, you go through, and then if like if Oslo is your end destination, you'll go get your bag in Oslo, and then you just walk out the green, nothing to clear line. Um, if you're connecting to like Bergen on a flight, then what you'll do is you'll go to the passport control, and you're you're going to check your bags uh, when you when you check in at first. Say, hey, can you check it all the way to Bergen? And then you'll actually get your you'll go through the passport control stuff, but then you'll go to the connecting flights, and then you'll get your flight to Bergen, and then you'll get your luggage in Bergen. So I hope that helps out a little bit, Morgana. Next up, to do, to do. Hey, Jason, good to see you. Hey, Barry, good to see you too. Um, Fubuki, there's still time to book stuff for this summer. Don't worry. Uh, let's see. What else do we have? Do, do, do. Harrison Helms, how many days for Paris? Oh, a lifetime, maybe? Look, um, see, we've gone to Paris numerous times. We still haven't seen everything. I would say. For you to give a, a nice taste, to see the Louvre, go to the Eiffel Tower, Arc de Triomphe, hit another museum, explore a bit, I would give yourself at least three full days, like not travel day and two days. I would say travel day getting there, like you're getting there that day, then give yourself three days, then take off the next day, like a five-day thing. Then it'll give you a nice taste of the stuff there. Uh, Chris, look, there you are. Hey, okay, Chris, I found it. There it is. Because So for you guys see here, it's different than what I see, so that's why it doesn't show up. So sorry, Chris. So Chris Lucas, hey Mark, well thank you for the super chat. Hey Mark, love the channel, been taking your advice for years now. What will you do in Paris in only one day given that you've been there a few times? So if I only had one day, hmm, I would eat. I would get in in the morning, go grab a croissant from a boulangerie and just walk around a neighborhood in the morning. I would walk in a neighborhood that has some sights to see from the outside to take in the architecture. And then I'd have a nice lunch because lunch will be your big meal because you get a good deal there. And then I'd probably hit up a museum like the Musée d'Orsay, like walk along the river, take maybe a boat tour to see the main sites that way, get off at the Musée d'Orsay stop, go to the Musée d'Orsay, see the main stuff I like there, and then walk around again. Um, yeah, I'd probably go up to Montmartre up by Sacre Coeur, hang out there. Then I'd have dinner at uh, La Vache. Et le cousinier, that's our favorite restaurant, the cow and the cook. In Mamar, we go there to have their morel mushroom poached eggs, and uh, that's what I would have. So that would be my day there. So I hope that helps, Chris. Sorry I didn't see your super chat when it comes through, because like what you, this thing just flies by on me, and so it doesn't always show me what, what's up there. So I do apologize. So what else? Do, 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 do. Moving on. Okay. Gigas Tone, to see all the monuments and museums in Porto, a maximum five or six days. Okay, so I would not spend five or six days in Porto. Porto's like two, three days. Unless you're going to do, if you're going to do the five or six days in Porto, what you're going to have is you're going to have a day trip. One day you're going to go to Guimarães, which is the true birthplace of Portugal. It's a stone city. It's beautiful. Then you got another day trip to Braga, so you can go to Bon Jesus, which is a, 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 nice, a nice basilica to go up to. Hey, Laura. Um, that's another thing I, I would go see. But like seeing the main sites in Porto, you need two days for seeing that. So so there's that one there. Uh, Sushi X, is Istanbul safe? In most places it is safe. You just got to be careful when you're there. We're going to be going hopefully next year. So I'll give you more in, insight. But always check warnings and stuff like that before you go. Chad Williamson, thank you very much for the super chat. Um, having a hard time deciding which islands to visit and which to overnight in in Thailand. We want beautiful sites, but authentic, not party scenes. Ooh, that's a tough one because a lot of the islands now have become overrun with party stuff because Thailand's become a go-to like 
party destination for a lot of people and a lot of like it's a lot of people that have become the digital nomads being there i think i think what you need to do is maybe instead of trying to travel between so many pick like three that really call to you and just make that a base and really get to know that islands and try to see all the islands because you'll spend so much time getting between them that sometimes you'll it's almost like you're it's like people that try to do 10 countries in 12 days in europe like you're spending all your time in in trains and not actually you know enjoying the culture so do be careful with that um but yeah yeah i would say also if you're going to be in thailand i would also try to throw in some other countries when you're down there because it's relatively close and relatively inexpensive to get around so it might be something to do too so no that's super helpful but i hope it helps a little bit jose guerrero thank you very much my friend from mexico hopefully we're gonna be getting down to mexico city this next year uh, for a weekend away so hoping from that greetings my friends with mittens that wrote us there um let's see Leo Cole. Hi, Mark. I'm traveling. Thank you. And yes, my name is Mark, by the way. It's Mark Walters. Um, I'm traveling to China for seven weeks. Cool. I was there for seven weeks a few years ago. Um, have you been to China before? If so, do you recommend any cities in China to visit? Yes. Um, actually, if you put in Walters World China on YouTube, you'll see a bunch of our old videos. Um, I taught in Beijing for two months in 2013. It was a cool time. Beijing's a must when you go there just because all the sites are there, but it's really crowded and crazy when you are there. So have a lot of patience when you go. Um, I really like, but for me, I love Xi'an. Xi'an's where the terracotta warriors are. You go there, see that, have the lamb stew when you're there. That's fantastic. Shanghai is also a really great city to go see. Guangzhou is really cool to see. If you can get down to Hong Kong as well, there's some really nice stuff to see. Uh, be prepared for um, pollution um, and stuff. So make sure you get a good mask because sometimes you will need it. Not all the time, but sometimes you will. So do have a fun, but have a fun time when you go down there. Um, oh, thank you. Giovanni Espinoza, thank you very much for the super chat. Stationed in Grafenwohl, Germany, uh, an hour east of Nuremberg. Thank you for your service. Spain worth visiting during the winter. So where should I go and what should I see? Okay, so Spain in the winter, what people don't realize is Madrid is cold in the winter. I found that out the hard way many, many years ago. I'm like, oh, it's a lot chillier than I expected. Yeah, so do have a heads up. It still is worth visiting, but if you're going to, like, I would not do the beach towns kind of stuff in the winter because it's not that that's not a thing to go do so stick to more of the culture cities i would do like madrid or barcelona and i know barcelona is famous for a beach town but there's so much stuff to see there that you don't need every really why not even get to the beach that's cool sevilla doing it like based in sevilla and go to cordoba or ronda when you're there that could be a fun thing so that's what i would kind of kind of um look for there uh let's see next up the very lazy travelers. Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Going to Beijing, going back to our Chinese thing. Going to Beijing, I want to give, that's my 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 sister-in-law, she's here. She got a little one on the way, so we're excited for her. Um, go, so the very lazy travelers, going to Beijing, I want to give the tour guide and bus drivers and other helpful people trinkets, gifts, and ideas what to bring from San Francisco. Okay, so I actually got a question about this from um, a, a student that was actually gonna go study abroad. And they're like, what should I bring for my for my, my host family and stuff like that? One thing we always uh, we like to take is, we'll take candy that's from around where we're from that people can't get in other places. So everyone always likes candy, especially kids. You can always give that out. That's always a nice thing. Um, also like baseball caps from your, your hometown or t-shirts from your hometown. T-shirts are tough because you never know the size the driver is going to be and stuff like that. So sometimes hats or bandanas and stuff like that are kind of popular. I have a friend of mine that I gave a St. Louis Cardinals hat to. I mean, this is like 20 years ago I gave her the hat. I mean, not 20 years ago, but like a long time ago. And we saw in Luxembourg this summer and she's like hey could you give me another hat I want to get another one I'm like all right all right so uh that might be something to look into so there, there's one thing there but if that's just it any small little thing is going to be appreciated and, and tips are always appreciated too um let's see India we are actually we were talking about India I was actually having that conversation with my mom last night about a trip to India so there is that let's see going down Susan Gore thank you very much for this super chat uh, the Dornoan region with a 12-year-old boy, what you think? He's only been to Bruges and Alsace. Hmm. I don't know. I think one of the things is that there you can actually do some outdoor activities. Um, if you can find a hike or a guided hike or something like that to do, that might be something. Because I know like our 12-year-old, you know, I mean, you got a 12-year-old, so you know it's like Fortnite and where's my friends. So it's it's hard to get them excited about stuff. Um, I would I would find some things like that um nearby 
Um, other things, I mean, this is one thing that it's not just a region. Like with the 12 year olds, it, it also helps like if there's something that you can get them to buy into. Like, hey, why don't you reuse yourself? Or why don't you pick some stuff we can do? Like give give him like, like find four things you'd like to do that he, you think he might like. Like, hey, here's four things I found there. Why don't you figure out like, which one do you want to go to? So then he'll figure it out which one he really wants to go to. And you're like, okay, we'll go there. And then he's kind of buying in because he picked that one. And that's really helped us with our kids to get them to be more excited about um, different places. So that's something to look at. Um, let's see. Alicia Sedano. Hi, Mark. Do you have any experience advice on the visitor's Renfe Spain Pass? Okay, so Renfe is the Spanish train line. Um, and when you're there... My feeling on train passes, some are worth it, some aren't. Like regional train passes, like the Bayern ticket, Bavaria ticket you get in Bavaria, which lets you go any of the regional trains the whole day all over the Bavarian state. Those are really good because you can get five people. You can go see some places close by. That's really helpful. But like Eurorail passes, I feel like they've kind of become too expensive for what you're going to get. And sometimes it's easier and cheaper to buy your own tickets and stuff like that. So that's something to look at. Also with the Renfe Spain Pass, if you're going to be using any of the fast trains, you still need to get the seat reservations on those like Ave trains and stuff like that. So do have a heads up for that. Uh, let's see. Jimmy UK, what, Ameri what do Americans think of British people? That British people have sexy accents and they're all smarter than us because they sound so smart when they talk. So that would be one thing there. Um, pizza Pizza, advice for cheap airfare traveling to Tel Aviv. Book way early. I mean, we were looking, we, we got tickets to uh, Tel Aviv uh, beginning of the year for the end of the year. And that's when it was actually like, I can actually afford this. So that would be something to look into. Michael Callanan, thank you very much. God bless you too. Um, let's see. Kim, I love when I click on YouTube and see a live chat happening. I'm glad you could be a part of it. Um, do you know anyone who has done the Camino? Yes, um, I've seen many people do the Camino de Santiago. For those who don't know, there's actually, it's a, it's a hike you can go actually from basically in France, all the way across Spain to Santiago de Compostela in Spain. It's in Northwest Spain in Galicia. And uh, I've been there a couple times. It's a really cool town. The, 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 the Basilica, when you get there, it's gorgeous. Like it's, you do it and you're like, oh man. But you know, there are places you can stop and stay along the way. You'll see people walking, hiking with their sticks and their donkeys and stuff like that. So there's a whole industry that is geared towards that. Okay, so you will you'll, you will not have a problem finding information on about that one. Oh, Jose Guerrero, you're back, buddy. Good to see you. Could you talk about, oh, the Caribbean algae. So one of the things you'll see, because uh, there is environmental uh, impacts are happening around the world and sometimes they will affect your vacation and so uh, Jose is asking about the algae that's coming up in, and then some of the um, places around some of the islands in the Caribbean these are things you want to look into if you're going to go to a place that has that I mean you do not want to get in the water when there's anywhere that stuff's anywhere near you and so there is um, there are some serious issues with that now, I don't know what else I can say but I will say is anytime there's a place that has a serious environmental impact whether there's a huge storm or there's something like this you need to do your research before you go what can you still do what can't you do what is stopped what is not stopped what's allowed what's not allowed you want to have a heads up for that and also um with that sometimes you need to realize this after those storms happen when and things are getting back some people don't go back for years and so that's why sometimes we've actually gone to places to say look it's okay to go back to this country now like it's safe again or they've rebuilt or helped them rebuild because if tourism is a big part of an industry of a country and the tourists are gone there's no money to rebuild the infrastructure and kind of stuff like that so you got to be careful with those things let's see cali diva for life Leavenworth, Washington was settled by Swiss immigrants. They have a replica of a Swiss village. Mountains look like the Swiss Alps. Yes, they do. And that's actually, so a few people have written me about Leavenworth, Washington. I always think of Leavenworth, Kansas, because my mom used to live there. Um, but yeah, there, there is that. And there's actually a few places you go, like where my parents live, a lot of German immigrants settled here. So there's tons of like the red brick northern German towns. I remember the first time I went to Germany, I was like in Bremen and Hamburg. And I'm like, my God, it's it's like I'm in my hometown. There's so many buildings that look just like our old town. So it's kind of neat there. Uh, if you go into Helena, um, Georgia, or Helena, Georgia, Helena, Georgia, they have a like old world Germany kind of looking place too. So so there's some really cool stuff. Titus Kirkland, is it hard to be a vegetarian traveling in Europe? No, it is not. Um, you will not have a problem. You will not. I'm, I'll just tell you that one right now. And that's actually everywhere in the world. It's getting a lot easier for vegetarians and vegans. A lot of places. I mean, I thought in Rwanda, to be honest, the vegetarian options were. Well, that's in Africa, but like the vegetarian options were better than the meat options. So you'll be okay. Um, Ty Tyrone, Unica, la 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 la. Best parts of Sevilla and Barcelona. So Sevilla, 
wandering around and going into the small tapas bars when you're there, going up the tower in the cathedral is really cool. There's also some good day trips. You get to Cordoba from there. So you have a fun time there. Um, just, I mean, Sevilla is a big, very popular town for people to go learn Spanish and study abroad students. So you have a lot of international people there, a lot of young vibe there. So that's cool. Barcelona, best part of Barcelona. I like going, like drinking um, cava, the bubbly, like you know, Spanish champagne, basically, uh, at a, a cava bar and having pinchos, which are tapas and pinchos, different stuff you have there. So those are my favorite things doing there. Um, let's see. For us. Sorry, I've got a hide some users because there's some naughty people on here i gotta figure out this, this the moderator things to get some of you guys to help moderate some of these people that get on here let's see bobette mccann i'm headed to copenhagen later today for my birthday can you recommend a good restaurant that won't break the bank uh the hot dog stands are the only place that will not break your bank when you're there i'm sorry to tell you that but you will get really good food in copenhagen they, are, they do not mess around with the quality of their restaurants so you will eat well but the cheap cheap options you have the hot dogs are really good and get the Danish one and make sure you eat it the right way where you have to like lean over and eat it like this so it all drops like down there instead of on your shirt uh, for that. Um, also, um, the pastries there are fantastic. There's a reason why we all love Danishes because they do a great job at that. So let's see. Uh, wise guy, how many days for Berlin? Um, I've got a few videos on Berlin that can help you out, but I would say Berlin, two, three full days. You'll be fine. Like a good long a long weekend, you'll be you can see most of the good stuff there. Um, the last beetle. Hey, Mark, are Hard Rock hotels worth going to? I've been thinking of going to one. I don't know if you've been to any. So I have not stayed in any of the Hard Rock hotels. I have gone to the Hard Rock casino and I've been to some, the Hard Rock restaurants. That was kind of one of our you know if we miss home when we lived abroad, that was like our go to. Like I miss chicken wings. I want some chicken wings. We'd go there. Um, but the hotels I have not stayed in, so I can't say. Um, but I have I have liked probably about 10, 15 years ago, they were all bought and under one roof. And so the, the menus became standardized, but they got good standardized, not like standardized crap. They got better. So I would assume it'd be okay. Uh, let's see. I do not know the best place to go for brunch in London. I'm sorry. I always, our, our Saturday and Sunday brunch is going to Chinatown and having dim sum. So that's, that's that. Gary Santana, how many times a year do you travel? At least once a month we're going places. Um, let's see. Yes, we were in Texas and we did go to Bucky's and I said Bucky's is a truck stop. It's not a truck stop. It's it's a gas station that don't want the trucks in there, but it's a fantastic place with the cleanest bathrooms you'll ever see. And get the get the beaver nuggets. They're they're, they're fantastic. Let's see. Da -da -da. Oh, I'm I, I'm my my stuff is going crazy right now, so I'm trying to go back up. Let's see. Uh, Czech Republic City recommendations besides Prague and, and Karlovy Vary. Well, you know, Chesky Krumalov is probably the most. And you can go to Pilsen for the tour of the Pilsner Kell Brewery. And they have a night. They're all towns okay to go check out. And it's not that far from from uh, from Prague to get to. So that's one thing I'd say there. Yes, JoJo Bucky's is amazing. Football and hockey. Did you like Finland? I did. I really enjoyed Finland. I was actually an exchange student there when I was in high school. And I've been back a few times and actually took my whole family a couple years ago. And the kids loved it. It was really nice to see my, my youngest son just was loving on my old host mom like crazy. And she's like, what the heck? It was, but it was so wonderful because she was so happy and he was happy. It was a really nice thing. Um, the Very Lazy Travelers come to San Francisco. So I was looking at going to see the banana slugs south of you at the state park just south of San Francisco with Liam. Uh, so we, we, might be, we might be there eventually to take you up on that because I that would be awesome. Thank you. Um, let's see. So Amanda Pixton, love your videos. Thank you. Any tips for planning a two-week itinerary for Japan and then cherry blossom season? Oh, it'll be gorgeous. It'll be gorgeously expensive as well. Um, one thing I would say is, though Tokyo, you can spend so you can spend all the time in Tokyo, but don't force yourself to get out and spend time in other places like Osaka and, and and Kyoto and stuff like that, so you can see some more historic stuff. That would be what I'd recommend to do. Um, Little Kriak, South Africa or Japan, they are so different. If you're going to go to South Africa, you're going to you know, Kruger National Park, and you're going to see the animals and stuff like that. Whereas Japan, you're getting the technology kind of stuff, the, the, the old Japan history stuff. So you, it's such a big difference. Um, you got to really check that out. Let's see. What else do we need to have? Let's see. What's the best place to visit in Spain? Barcelona, Madrid, and Valencia. Those are all good places. I think Valencia is kind of a hidden gem 
that people like, like that old term that people like to talk about. Um, I was there. I took students to Valencia a couple of years ago, and I was impressed with the Art Deco architecture and then the science center that's there. It looks like they film futuristic TV shows there all the time. I mean, it's a really cool setup. Um, I was really, really, really pleased with Valencia. Like, I would go back there. Like, that would be a nice, like, not as many tours as Madrid and Barcelona, but just as beautiful. And it's cool because you can have the historic stuff, you can have the museum stuff, and they have a beach there too, so that's kind of cool. Also, a very popular place for students to study abroad, so thing to go for. Let's see. OG, are you and Jocelyn planning on staying in the U.S. when you retire, or will you be moving abroad? P.S. Looking forward to new Walters World gear. Yes, I wrote to the, the, the guy that helps us with our designs for our stuff, so we're working on some new designs. Uh, for some gear that we'll put on sale probably next month, uh, so we'll have that. Um, I, I don't know. Jocelyn has wanted to retire in Nicaragua and get a you know an I want to buy little tiny houses in all the continents. Yes, yeah, she wants to buy little tiny houses in all the continents so we can go and do that. So, uh, so financially speaking, sadly I have not won the lottery, so that will probably won't happen. But. Uh, we, we thought about that, but you know, that's one of the things we love lots of places in the world. So who knows? Maybe we'd be like that lady that retired and just retired on the cruise ship and goes around the world all the time. Who knows? Pedro Braz, hola, meu amigo, tudo bem? Um braço para você. Um, let's see, Patrick, can he ever have to bribe your way out of trouble while traveling? Well, technically speaking, legally speaking, no, I, ha I don't believe I have bribed anyone because you're not allowed to bribe people from the US. There's a law against that. Um, but I have been shook down uh, by cops in uh, Russia, and I've been shook down by border guys in Paraguay before, and there might have been money that I remember one place the guy pulls out a drawer and says, drop it here, and walk out, and they walked out of the room, and money fell out of my wallet, I guess, and I got to get back on a bus to go back to Buenos Aires, so there's all kinds of interesting stuff that's on there. Let's see. Phillies, I'm 20 years old and I'm going to New York for five days alone. Cool. Before going to Costa Rica, that's awesome. To study Spanish for six months. What's some must-dos in New York City? Okay, uh, definitely go out to Ellis Island. That is really cool. When you go out there, you don't really have to get off at, at where, where the Statue of Liberty is. It's just seeing the Statue of Liberty from outside when you go around the boat is best. But getting off Ellis Island, that's really cool. Eating in Soho, I always like doing that. The Natural History Museum, that's the one that's based off the, the Night of the Museum. That's that's a cool museum to check out. The Met is a must. you got to go to the Metro Metropolitan Museum. That's a must museum. Um just like take it in the city. It's just such a great experience. So you'll have you'll be you'll you'll be busy the whole time when you're there. But always go to the bathroom in your hotel or your hostel or wherever you're staying before you go out because finding a bathroom that's not disgusting is kind of tough in New York when you're going around, okay? Yes, Alex, Jocelyn would like us to retire on a on a on a island in Greece, that's for sure. Radio Runt, watch all your island videos. I hope you liked them. Thank you very much. Um let's see. Oh, must do's in Ireland. Rent a car and make sure you stay on the correct side of the road. But I would say go into a pub in Ireland and listen to live music is a must. Um, driving and just taking the scenery when you're there. Going to the Cliffs of Moher is fantastic and all the barren area. That's a really neat kind of thing. Um, and there's a lot of small towns people don't think of going to. Like Windsor, a lot of people – not Windsor, um, Waterford, sorry. Waterford, a lot of people skip over. But actually, it's a really nice town. They think it's just the, the crystal. But, yes, there's a crystal stuff there. But the actual town itself is really nice. Tom Quinn, I have been to the Lake District in England. I dated an English girl for a number of years, and we traveled all over England, stayed at a lot of the historic homes and stuff like that. And it was really – I like the Lake District. And the Peak District, that's really cool. Um, let's see. What else? Hey, MA in LA, good to see hear from you. Um, no, mistreated, I have not been to Picos de Europa, sadly. Let's see, TD Gray, strong all. Would nine days be enough for Sicily? Um, Sicily, nine days, oh yeah, that'd be plenty. And for me, like you got Palermo, you got a couple days there, then you're gonna go around the coast, there's a town on top of a rock, you gotta go there, that's another day. And then you go to the Valley of the Temples, that's a day there. And then you go to, you go, go by Mount Etna, you can hike up that, that's a day there. Syracuse, I, that's one of the prettiest squares in Europe, you can have that. And then a day just eating those rice balls. So there's there's seven, at least right there. So then you got a day traveling, so there's eight. And a day at the beach, there's nine, so you're, you're, you're good. Um, the very late, I take Liam on a tall, I'm going to say a tall ship cruise. Um, so Caleb actually does sailing camp and they do all kinds of stuff. And so Liam will be old enough for sailing camp in two years. So we're going to get him stuff for that. Uh, Alex Meza, the Chicago hot dog is the best hot dog in the U.S. 
Okay, so for those who don't know, the Chicago dog's got a lot of different stuff on it. And there's always this joke, don't ever put ketchup on it. Well, the thing is, it's not that Chicago people don't put ketchup on their hot dogs, but if you get a Chicago-style hot dog, there's so many things in it already that the flavor balance is actually perfect just the way it is for the sweetness and the salty and stuff like that. So that's why you don't actually put the ketchup on Not because they hate ketchup. It's just because the Chicago dog is that perfect mix of flavors. And I, and I won't lie to you. I like having them when I go to Chicago. Let's see. Scott Vila, all of your videos are very helpful. I'm picking my vacation. I'm glad we can help out there. Um, <laughs> oh, Tayawata. Thank you for, I mean, you, you comment a lot. Thank you very much. But Tayawata, how do I encourage my friends to put down their phones when we're traveling together? That's a tough one. Actually, one thing we've done before when I've taken college students, because, you know, college students are like all of us, they are attached to their phones, is we actually had a, we would get a basket and say, no, all phones go in here. Like you can get it back and take a picture of your food, fine, but it goes back in here. And because then people were forced not to talk. And so that's one thing we do. And because sometimes you just call them out like, you know, and it's, it's weird to call them out like, hey, could we talk? You know, it's like with my kids, like my oldest were here visiting my parents and watching my mother-in-law's cat for three or four days. And he's been playing Fortnite and his stuff. And I'm like, dude, at least like go play it by grandpa because grandpa can't hear very well. So it doesn't really matter. You don't have to talk to him, but just be near him. But it is tough. And I would say one of the things is like, hey, you might want to say before the trip. Because a lot of times if you know you're going to have issues when you're traveling with people beforehand, it's good to talk about it beforehand. Like money stuff. Like, look, I like going to medium price restaurants. My friend likes to go to super expensive restaurants. We have another friend who wants to like drink water the entire trip. So we have to have that discussion before we go. It's like, look, we're one to one to eat. Uh, like, is there sometimes it's going to be too much? It's okay that you could eat by yourself or we can do other things and stuff like that. So it's good to have a conversation about it beforehand. Because I, I will admit, I, I, I go traveling, you'll see people on their phones the whole time. But we'll sit as a family and just look around and be like, wow. And especially when it's family, she's like, man, this is a good time to talk about what did you like. And sometimes it's, you're not really sure what to talk about. Sometimes it's good just to have just general stuff, like general topics to look at. Like look up the top 100 topics of conversation that you can talk about, non-politics, non-weather, you know, do that. So we have that. So Gule Acte, guess what? Santa Fe, New Mexico, Jocelyn and I are going there. We actually have tickets for there for uh, this fall. So we'll be there. We will be there. So that's going to be fun. So advice on Santa Fe. My mom loves it. When I, t when I asked my mom to babysit for us, she's like, yeah, well, no problem. She was very happy. And then she's like, where are you going? I'm like, oh, the Southwest. She's like, where in the Southwest? I'm like, New Mexico. She's like, oh, oh we're at New Mexico. I'm like, Santa Fe. And she's like, no, I would have gone. She was so sad that she didn't get to go. She loves Santa Fe. So, so it'll be fun. Uh, let's see. What do I think about stereotypes that polls are stupid? They aren't. Um, a lot of the stereotypes, they're, they're, the last stereotypes people make have been made to like put people down. I mean, some stereotypes like Germans, they really are on time. Like that, that's a thing, you know, but then sometimes like the stupid or the smart or something like that, sometimes it's overdone. So, that's why I like to do the traveling stuff so I can see, you know, because sometimes things are true, some things aren't true. So, you know, it's, it's nice to kind of think about that. Um, Amanda, any tips for visiting Nice during Carnival? No, nah, just like normal time too. Um, then when you go on the beach, we're not going to go like lay out then. It's not going to be that nice, but it's a stone beach. So like have like some comfortable shoes to walk around in. Um, TD Gray Stronghold, dear Mark, thank you for the sisterly advice in your videos you make. Oh, thanks, man. I'm glad I can help out. It's always nice to know I'm helping other travelers. I mean, we went to Sicily. So what you need to know is Sicily, you're not going to see Ro those. The Valley of Temples is not Roman. That's Greek because the Romans used Sicily as a bread basket. They just grew grain. So you don't have a lot of historic stuff there. So it's a lot, like, that's why I like, make sure you plan some beach time and stuff like that. People are super nice there. And oh my God, you will eat so much food. They will stuff you to explode. Just, just letting you know. Okay. So just trying to help. Um, let's see. Frank Spindel Salvador, good. Looking forward to go there. Um, <laughs> Jay Perk, if you don't leave the airport, would you add that country to the total of countries visited? For us, it's Iceland. Um, no, I, I probably would not. Or I'd put an asterisk by it if I did. Um, like, there's sometimes like, you know, Kenya, we were at the airport for a long time. We had to go through, we had to get a transit visa. Like, do we count that? No. <laughs> Not really. Maybe an asterisk next to it if you want to have that, if you feel like you got something out of it. But usually I want to see a bit more. But you know those people that go around and see all the countries in the world in like three days? I mean, I'm guessing that's all they do sometimes is just see an airport and get a stamp. I don't know. Let's see. 
Yeah, Mono, I just got back from Crete. Was that a re-upload? No, that's the, the the new. It's a new video I just edited together. I filmed it before, um, but yeah, it, but it was uh, I had never put that video up before. Uh, Alex May says Chicago deep dish pizza is the best pizza. So Chicago deep dish pizza is about this this thick in real life. And so when I'll take friends to and they come visit, we'll go to Chicago. They're like, oh, we'll get a large. I'm like, eh, why don't you get a medium? Like, ah, oh, I'm so hungry. I'm like, you'll be fine. I was actually in Chicago. I was supposed to be there for a training in December. And I got there and they canceled the training. So I'm like, okay, I'm in Chicago. I'll go have some pizza. And, and I went to a place. I went to a Gino's East. And I go sit down. And there's a place for, like, losers that have no friends to go sit and eat by themselves. And so I'm there. And this English guy comes up. And I got the small. And the small was like this, which was plenty for me. And this guy is, is like, yeah, I want to get, you know, pizza. And he got an appetizer. He's like, yeah, I want to get the, the medium pizza. And I'm like, I, I told my guy, dude, um, I just want to let you know, like, the medium pizza is here. I mean, it's like this size, but it's this thick. And they're like, no, I, I eat a medium pizza all the time at home. And he's a British guy. I'm like, yeah, it's not Domino's, pal. And, of course, you know, he gets the salad, he gets a drink, he got, like, breadsticks, and then this comes out, and he, and he just sees his eyes go. And he, and he just looks at me, and I'm like, you don't have to say it. I know. I was right. <laughs> so, yeah, you can't mess around with that. Um, Dev, what's the second city you would see in France after Paris? Probably Strasbourg or Nancy. Those are both really great. Um, or Avignon. I like Avignon in Provence. We spent Christmas there once, and I've been there a few times. Really nice places there. Uh, yes, Ty, I want pizza now, too. Buenos Aires pizza. Okay, so Mundo Pequeño. Buenos Aires pizza is the best pizza. So I will say this. If you go to Argentina and you have pizza in Buenos Aires, it's a different kind of pizza. It's like a different kind of cheese, kind of flavor stuff. Um, the boys were kind of surprised by it. I used to live in Argentina, so I know what he's talking about. It's a different kind of pizza when you go there. So for that kind of pizza, it's pretty good. So I'll leave it at that. Way away. Hey, guys. Good to see you up there, Josh and Ashley. Um, I don't know where they are these days. Um, they're traveling around quite a bit. Hey, you guys. Love you guys. Really enjoying your Africa content recently. We have not made it there yet, but love seeing your experiences. I think they're in Scandinavia right now, burning through a lot of money and, and, and very few days there. Um, we had a great time in Africa, in East Africa. Rwanda and Tanzania, fantastic people. We were super safe, you know. I'm excited to put out, we're going to be putting out a bunch of like safari and, and Tanzania videos this week and next week. Well, this coming week and the next week. Um, so I have some more of those out, some more Rwanda videos. Because I think a lot of people, are they, they still think genocide. That's all I think of when they think of Rwanda. And it's been 25, it's 25 years ago this year. Uh, there's a lot of stuff for that. So it's an ex exciting, exciting time to go. So well worth visiting, guys. So I'm sure you get down there eventually. You guys go all over the place. You, you youngins with no kids, responsibilities, getting to run all over the world. So very happy with them. Check them out. Away, away, mag. They got some good stuff. Good people. Um, oh, Tosh T, thanks, buddy. Going into the fifth set. Come on, Federer, pull it out. He should have been running Djokovic more back and forth because he seemed a little bit tight at the beginning. But yeah. Oh, yeah. Leon Haven says Bordeaux for another great town in, in France. It's another great town. We're actually going to Bordeaux in October. So uh, we'll have some videos from there. Hopefully, to help that person out south before soon enough. Let's see. What else do we have? Wait, wait. Istanbul and the plans. We'll be there the month of August. Would love to hang. Uh, we are looking to go to Istanbul, but it won't be probably till the end of the year. Um, so we won't be there when you're there, guys. But. Make sure you make good videos to help me learn so I can, when I do my research, I can find out more from you. So there is that. Um, let's see. Hyper Review. Say a typically German word. Hallo! There's some typical German for you. Wie geht's dir? Alles klar? Alles gut? Prost! You know, zum Wohl. All kinds of good German stuff there. Uh, Johan Ekman. Yes, we have been to Kyoto, and we actually like Kyoto for the historic side of it better than Japan for that way, so I would definitely recommend going there. Hey, Philip in Yukon, Canada. I was just talking to my mom about going up there with her uh, last night. So hopefully we'll get up there and visit you guys soon enough. Um, someone's in Venice for two days. Recommendations for food. So you can have a black pasta. It's like made with squid ink, which is pretty good. You're going to have that. There's a sardine sauce pasta you should have when you're there. A spritz opera, which is all over the world now. You can have that when you're a drink when you're there, when you're on one of the squares. Um, so there's those are some stuff I'd recommend. Um Let's see. So Cody Bedford, hey Mark. Thing, hey there. A lot of Europeans come to the U.S. with currency cards, and I was wondering if you recommend the same for first-time travelers from the U.S. going to Europe. Yeah, you can do that. I mean, they're just basically debit cards or prepaid cards. You can do those things. Um, I what I usually do is 
I we I just use my local bank ATM card and use a bank ATM when I'm abroad and do that and and that usually gives me my best rates so I usually do those. The train who wins Wimbledon? I'm hoping for Federer, but me wanting him to win means he'll lose. So there's not that's not good. Uh, hey, no kids, but still no money. <laughs> oh, I know that feeling too. Um, Barb, I have not been to Ghana, but I had a friend of mine who we were very good friends, and he, he's always wanted us to go down there. He ran a hotel down there, well, hotel down there for a couple of years, and uh, so he's he's trying to get us to go down there. So we might go down with him in the future to go see where he used to be. Um, let's see. Oh, Ma, with your no kids but still no money kind of thing. There's one thing is a lot of people will write and say, "Hey, I have no money to travel." Well, the thing is, you don't necessarily have to go abroad to travel. Sometimes it's just traveling around your local area, like by where my parents live. There's Hannibal, Missouri. It's Mark Twain's hometown. You can go see that, or go into your local museums in your home hometown. Especially if you have kids, getting them used to going to museums to learn about stuff that they didn't know before can spark that interest in learning more. So that'd be some stuff there. Um, let's see, Foxy Waxy, you're welcome for the Venice tips. Um, Let's see, Harry Chambers. Hey, Mark, you must have some really interesting travel stories. There's a few. Ever thought of telling them maybe in a podcast? We have um, thought about the podcast stuff. Um, right now, it's just it's just a matter of timing. Like, uh, we've got the Walters World channel that's doing great. I've got the new channel, the Professor Walters channel, which is marketing and YouTube advice. We just started doing that, and then I have my other job that I'm doing, and we're trying to get the website working again. It's just it's just time is one of the big things there so hopefully we can get started doing a, a podcast in the future but we're just not there yet it's just you know you know how it is time time and money there's never seems to be enough um let's see i went to uh gab is going to edinburgh this year any suggestions the castle hollywood hollywood house at the bottom they're going into the stores when you're there just feel like you're almost at a harry potter set it's really cool uh don't be scared of the scottish food we have a few edinburgh videos and scotland videos to help you out we're actually going back to edinburgh my mom and i are going back next month so we'll be there for the the french fest so that'd be cool garrett dahl schweinhaxe yes schweinhaxe ist wunderbar this is, jocelyn says it's gross but what does she know if you're not sure what Schweinhax is, that whenever you see a cartoon or a video game and they give you that piece of meat on a, on a bone and that gives you the health, that's Hoxa because it saves you. It's fantastic. Um, let's see. It's Fred Flintstone meat. Yeah, Fred Flintstone meat. Whatever, but it's fantastic. Um, <laughs> Ty, when do you sleep? I don't I don't sleep. I don't sleep. And I never. I actually never sleep on planes. I don't know why I can never sleep on a plane. Like 10-hour flight, I might get 30 minutes or maybe an hour broken up. But for some reason on a plane, I just never can get comfort enough to sleep so so there's that um let's see flizzy at jacob hood i'm i'm actually going to new york in september and i was wondering if it's acceptable for a norwegian guy to attend the 9 11 memorial it's yes it's appropriate for anyone in the world to attend it. it's a memorial like that's to show respect to people and stuff like that and, and you know what it wasn't just americans that died there's people from all over the world so yes please there's that nikki c why is your name not walter because my name is Mark Walters. Walters is my last name. So that's why Mark is my first name. So my parents called me Mark when I was born as a little baby. They said, your name is Mark and your last name is Walters. So that's where that is. Let's see. Alex May is a house it like in Germany around Christmas. So the Christmas market through the 24th, 23rd of, Ger of December. Germany is fantastic with all the Christmas markets, exploring those things. It's so much wonderful. It's fantastic. But they close on the 24th. They're not open on the 24th or the 25th or 26th. Those are all holidays. And unless you're in a place like Frankfurt or Hanover, which has a lot of international travelers, all the Christmas markets disappear in the small towns. So if you want to celebrate Christmas in Germany, you got to celebrate it before the, tw the 23rd or before. Okay, so check those things out. Um, <laughs> Hi, Copper T4. <laughs> Good to see you there. Um, Marshall, Mark, how many languages do you speak? Well, it depends how you just, just like declare speaking, like like this. I can do English pretty well. If you couldn't alles auf Deutsch machen, aber es wird ein bisschen langsam, weil ich nie mein Deutsch nicht so gut, aber es geht schon. So there's German. Uh, podemos hablar en español, pero el problema es que no tengo muchas posibilidades de hablar uh, donde vivo. Entonces la, las palabras no están aquí en la cabeza. Tal vez con práctica puedo hablar más, pero vamos a ver. So there's that one. Um, Portuguese, yeah, podemos fazer alguma coisa, mas vamos ver, porque não tenho muito, muito amigos do Brasil aqui, mas se há brasileiros lá, ou portugueses, dime lá, dime, dime alguma coisa. So there's some languages we can do some stuff in, okay? Uh, 
<laughs> so Nikki C, the first 100 videos I watch, I never listen to that. Hey guys, it's Mark. I just thought your name was Walter. Because every video starts with, hey there fellow travelers, Mark here with Walter's World. It's totally fine. And I'm not, I'm never upset by that because I've been called much worse things. So it's okay, but it is pretty funny. Uh, there is that. Um, let's see. <laughs> Oh, wait, I lost one. Hey, Mark, I'm going to Tokyo in September. Any plans for the season to know? No, you'll be fine. You'll have a good try. You'll have a good time. Uh, Parlez-vous français? Je parle seulement un petit peu de français. Je suis un bon touriste. Uh, mais il n'y a pas beaucoup de français ici. So I can just do the basic French kind of stuff, be a good tourist. Où est le toilette? Things like that. Uh, thanks, way away. I, I appreciate that, buddy. Um... Uh, Okay, so Jay Perk, would you fly or ride the train two days before Christmas between Prague and Budapest? If you get uh, ticket reservations, you can just take the train. Um, you can fly too, it'll save yourself a little bit of time, but yeah, I mean, it'll save you a lot of time between the two, so you'll be okay either way. Uh, Ray Sir Ryan, I have not been to Alaska, but we were talking about that last night. Said <laughs> merci. Um, Diana, thank you for the nice words. Um, that kid, Evan, hey Mark, I'm in Maui right now. Any tips on what to do there? Go to the beach. Go see some volcanoes. Make me feel more jealous of you. <laughs> so there's that. Graham Johnson, me too, learned, learned through French immersion from Western Canada. And that's the thing is the, the immersion stuff really does help. Like I think one thing I would like to do next year, um, Caleb wants to go to a soccer camp. And I'm trying to find him a soccer camp either in Barcelona or maybe in France. So we could take like one of the ones that's like, look, you have your soccer in the morning and the, or in the afternoon or whatever. And then the other part of the day, you're doing French classes or Spanish classes. And it'll be in the country to kind of hear it and learn it. I think that's a great way to learn. Um, let's see. Frank Peters, hi Mark, you seem to be often in Amsterdam. Any specific reason for that? Because uh, when I fly to Europe, a lot of times the cheapest flights are actually to go into Amsterdam and then get a different flight with somebody else to go other places in Europe. Uh, so that's why we end up there quite often, um, I think. Which which is funny that you say that because I've been there like five times this year in, in, in Schiphol. Um, but no, six, seven, eight, eight times this year. Uh, but I don't, I'm not, oh no, I am scheduled to be back there again. Uh, when we come back from Israel, we go through Amsterdam. So, <laughs> so I might be back again later this year. So that's, there's that too. Um, let's see. Okay. So Harry Chambers. Hey Mark, uh, other than watching Walter's World, how would you recommend a new grad plan, a Europe backpacking trip? One of the things I would say to you is look at how much time you have and don't overdo it. Um, well, when you're young, I mean, you want to see as much stuff as you can because you have your whole life ahead of you so you can find places you really like. Because sometimes I, I look at when you're backpacking when you're younger, it's it's more like a, a taste test. Like, let's see, oh, did I like this? Did I like this country? It's kind of cool. I want to go back there later because there's some places I keep going back to. I've been going back to for 20 years because I just love it so much when I went backpacking there when I was in high school. And you're like, man, that was such fun. I want to go back again and again and again. So think of it as almost like a taste testing stuff, but make sure you're planning some fun stuff, not just try to do a museum because what happens after like a couple of weeks it all kind of blurs together look another church town hall square museum church town hall you're like it all blurs together um what i would say is every time you get off that train take a picture of the sign of the city you're in so you know that these are, these next pictures are from trieste or these next are from trier you know things like that that would be one thing to do um but you know don't don't be scared to take the the cheap flights around europe and stuff like that to see things so let's see um, <laughs> Nikki, I would never call you worse things, Mark. Me and my boyfriend, Sam, love watching your videos. He's moving to Argentina on Wednesday. Oh, cool. Well, I need to get out some of my Argentina videos so you can go down and visit him. So we'll get those together. So thanks, Nikki. Um, oh, here's a good one. How do I convince my parents I should do a Rotary Youth Exchange to maybe Southern Europe? Have okay, them call Mark. have them call me. I've actually <laughs> talked to multiple parents about this. Um, I actually have a video. If you look online, if you look online on YouTube, you put in um, Walter's World, Advice for Parents um, st for Study Abroad, you'll see a video that I filmed in London outside the parliament, and it goes through some of their biggest questions, and that could help out. I mean, it's a great experience. I actually went with Rotary Exchange. I actually do like Rotary Exchange because you stay at three families, so you get different perspectives of the culture, and if one of the families sucks, at least you know you get to move out in three months to a new family because that happens. So there is that. Now let's see. Idaho Solo, did your family get all the recommended vaccinations for Africa, the anti-malaria pills too? Yes, we did. We did them all. So I, I just got my Hep B, like, number two shot, and I got to go back for another one later. So I got those. 
Um, we didn't really have any of the, the mosquitoes. We didn't necessarily need them where, where we ended up going. It wasn't the right season or whatever, but I do recommend getting those just to be safe because we had a friend of ours who had um, who got malaria, and it sucked. I mean, she was just my friend that's down in Ghana, his, his wife, she got malaria, and it was not fun. It was not fun. So if you can avoid that, be careful. Diana, she says hi, but she's with her sister because her sister's due in a couple weeks. So uh, we're, we're, we're getting down there. Got to plan the baby shower and stuff like that. So we're working on those. Uh, let's see. Idaho Solar. Yeah, okay. So there you go. Way away. There was my, my stuff on the vaccinations. Um, let's see. Hi, Mark. Uh, so Avery. Hi, Mark. What would be the cheapest transportation to take while going around Italy? We're planning to go to a bunch of cities, but just want to keep it really cheap. Okay, if you don't take the fast trains, the trains in Italy are pretty affordable. Um, they're not always on time, though. You could look at fl uh, flip or Flixbus. That's another option to take buses around. Um, so you have that. But as long as you're not taking the, the Eurostar, the fast trains, the Freccias, the, the, the trains are significantly cheaper, but they take significantly longer. So just have a heads up for that. Frank Calderon, what's the most expensive country city you have been to? Switzerland, Norway, J Tokyo. Those would be the most expensive places. Luxembourg was expensive, and I, yeah, Luxembourg. But I won't be going back to Luxembourg. Anyway, moving on, some other stuff. My battery's getting low here, and I'm going to have to, we have to do some other stuff. Are the Hearts Mountains, okay, so Warren Develt, I want to talk about this one because I love the Hearts Mountains. So are the Hearts Mountains accessible by taxi or public transport? So, Ward, you can get there with public transport. There's not – the reason why not a lot of tourists go to the Hearts Mountains, this is a mountain range that was where East and West Germany split. And so it kind of was like almost a no man's land, so it got left alone. So you have historic Germany there. Venega Oda, Quedlinburg, Gosla, they're beautiful, beautiful towns. Wonderful Christmas. We've gone there multiple times for the Christmas markets and stuff like that. So what you're going to do is you're going to take a train from Berlin. You might have to switch like in Magdeburg or something like that on the way uh, to get on there. They Unfortunately, they don't have the Hex Express anymore, which was funny because that means witch because there's all kind of witches kind of legends there. Um, but yes, you can get around no problem. You can get to Venega Oda and Quedlinburg and stuff like that. You'll be okay. Um, and I do recommend it. And you can take the uh, the Zugspitze, the, uh, the the steam train there when you're we're in Venega Oda, and you take the train, the the steam train, the cog train up into the mountains. So definitely do that when you're there. Uh, let's see, Malays visit Cyprus. We will get there. Don't worry. Um, let's see. So OG, with many misconceptions about Africa, what would you tell your viewers who might be on the fence about visiting the continent? So I would say watch all of our videos coming out for Rwanda and Tanzania. Um, every country is different. Africa is not one country. It's a continent, and there's so many differences between the countries. And a lot of people don't don't realize that or don't – I mean, it doesn't really – I mean, when, when the Ebola hit in West Africa – they canceled my university canceled trips to south africa but the thing is like miles wise west africa is closer to new york than west africa is to south africa you know so it's a big place in there um and do your research before you go like rwanda and tanzania are two of the safest places to go in in africa and kigali is one of the safest capitals in the world the capital of rwanda and you're like oh i didn't know that yeah you know but do your research before you go and you can really find out a lot of stuff and get more up-to-date stuff even in the last five years things can change so do have a heads up for that misha no i'm not planning to go to north korea sorry let's see um finishing off okay noah La, 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 Nice videos. Also, when are you going to visit my home, New Zealand? So we were thinking about maybe going at Christmas this year to do kind of like a three or four week trip and see New Zealand and Australia together. But right now, how things are, we might actually, because we got, the, there's a baby on the way. My, my, my niece or nephew, we don't know yet, will be here. So we probably won't want to be here for their first Christmas. So I think we'll probably do something shorter. So I think the winter, our winter, Northern Hemisphere winter, 2020 to 2021 i think that's where i'm gonna go so hopefully we'll have that shout out to canada always a shout out to canada philip we always have a good time when we go there um so anthony skeleton hi there love your videos love your channel thank you could you do some videos for solo travelers how to get the best deals best countries to travel solo and how to avoid solo travel premiums well, the thing is, with solo, I, the reason why a lot of times I don't have like a family specific or retiree specific or solo travel specific is so many of these things work no matter how you travel. So a lot of it's the same kind of stuff. It would just be titling a different video and filming another video on the topic, which I guess I could do. Um, we have, I do have a five love and hates of solo travel video. Uh, it's kind of an older one, but it still rings true. Um, there is that. But I think um, 
the solo travel premiums that you're hitting up with mostly now or like on cruises and tours and stuff like that because you have your own room kind of stuff that's where you're getting hit the most um that way i think those are the biggest ripoff kind of things now um, that you're going to face uh, it's not as bad as it used to be but there's still those things there because a lot of times now like some of the cruise ships are starting to have like so because there's so many people that aren't getting married and don't have a couple that they're actually having more of these like single cabins so there are some things getting planned towards that so there is that let's see avery thanks for the advice mark we're planning to go to europe and the uk for two months awesome was wondering if you had a video for long traveling i've been seeing so many of them okay so what i would say there's a video it's like three things to consider before you go on long-term travel just put walter's world long-term travel in youtube and you'll the video will have a picture it's from japan i filmed it in kyoto and there's the golden palaces in the picture i'm not in the picture it just says like future three things future travel or something like that that's a good one to watch to get you more prepared because when you look at it for longer term travel it's a, there's a financial side but there's also a mental side to it because two months is no longer vacation now it's really traveling and living abroad so you have to have a kind of different mentality in terms of planning and stuff like that so hope that helps let's see what's the next travel spot in the u.s uh just bought tickets to go to savannah georgia again so we'll be there uh next that'll be our next trip so there's that do 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 <laughs> and we'll finish off with Graham Johnson. I would love some advice about how to grow a stash like yours. So if you watch some of our Africa videos, I, I when I was gone for seven weeks, I didn't have my clippers, so my beard got really, really fuzzy and big. Um, and I would say, is, what's funny is when I grew, tried to grow a beard the first time, a mustache the first time, it didn't come in well. Second time, it didn't come in well. I actually took like the third time when I tried to grow it, that it actually started coming fuller and better. Um, but sometimes it's just genetics. Like if you don't, if you don't, if you're not, if you don't have the genetics to grow the beard and the mustache, it's just not going to work. And I have some friends that have tried and it's like three hairs here and four hairs there. I'm like, oh, it's, it's like you hit puberty. Oh, isn't that cute? So just try hard, be gentle with it. Just know sometimes it's good to share, shave it off and let it grow back again. I usually do my... I usually shave off my beard once every summer, um, but I've been traveling so much this year I haven't done that. Now my face is obviously red here, and it'll just be white here, so I gotta figure out another time for that. Anyway, um, Alyssa, I'll answer Alyssa's question too. Hey Mark, what travel insurance do you recommend for Americans traveling abroad? Um, I whatever I usually just get the what's ever offered with the, when I buy my flight tickets because that usually gives you a discount versus buying on your own. There's a lot of companies that actually offer it. I have not found any that were better than any other ones, so I can't recommend any one over another. Um, so there is that. Um, I've luckily we have not had too many issues while we've been traveling, so we haven't had to use our travel insurance too many times. Uh, but I always think it's very important to have that. And if you're over 65 or you're on Medicare, you have to get travel insurance because you will, your health care, your health stuff will not be covered by Medicare if you're from the U.S. So you have that. Um, let's see. Hey Miguel in Fort Wayne, Indiana. I might be going over to Indiana visit Purdue in uh, west lafayette later this later this summer so there's cool yes hopefully we'll get to galaxy's edge jacob but uh be a bit be, it'll be a big because i know we're going to be back down in florida or california um hey jason los angeles chicago bulls fan uh glad that your your brother cares about you wants me to say hi so hi jason hey <laughs> d's boy hungry <laughs> from germany anyway i've got to get going um our hey we've been on for an hour and a half it's been fun talking to everybody just thought i'd throw in something this this sunday morning just to say hi and wish you all the best while we're here babysitting a cat or cat sitting so when you get all the best hey in idaho i know you got great potatoes but you got a lot more moscow idaho's go vandals you have those so you got all kinds of good stuff um, but anyway, I wish you all the best. Thank you very much to everybody for your super chats. It does make a difference for us. We really appreciate it and wish you all, all, all the best. Um, Brendan, we have a bunch of videos on Texas. Just look up Walter's World Texas. We got some good stuff for you. Thanks, Avery. You have a great day too. Cali Diva, all good. John, thank you. Bruno, thank you. Everybody, sorry Jocelyn didn't come in too often. Jocelyn, you want to say bye? Oh, she's she's disappeared. Boys, you want to say Bye no i still love you guys though so thank you for everything <laughs> i wish you all the best bye from my parents house <laughs> bye